The year is 2039 and the Earth has become overpopulated. The human race is about to die. The United Nations mandates a 5% annual population reduction across all nations. The United States follows orders and implements a rule known as the thinning. Students in the thinning program must take a standardized test annually. Failure in the test leads to execution via drug injection. This sci-fi movie gonna blow your mind. Let's watch. The movie begins with Lena Michaels tutoring a high school student named Simon. Simon struggles with the equations and seeks help from Lena. She hands him the box of lenses. Simon's ability to solve math problems improves immediately after wearing them. We meet Edward Blake Redding, the son of Texas Governor Dean Redding. He sneaks out of his house at night to meet his girlfriend, Ellie Harper, in his car. Blake mentions their upcoming test the next day. Ellie is nervous, but Blake reassures her that she will pass. Blake's father's guard finds them and returns Blake to Dean's office. Dean is disappointed with Blake for leaving the night before an important test. He believes Ellie is a distraction for Blake. The following day is test day. Many students lined up outside the school. They must go through a thorough security check before entering. Blake asks Lena for one of her study lenses, but she is out of them. Lena and her friend, Kellen Woods, stand in queue to enter. One student had written cheats on his arms. When caught, he attempts to flee. The guards apprehended him. No one has ever been able to avoid or cheat on exams. Blake and Ellie exchange a final hug before entering the exam hall. The exam begins shortly after. They have two hours to finish the test. Everyone begins solving problems on their tablets. Lena completes all tasks successfully. Her friend, Kellen, appears to be struggling. After the exam, students receive their results immediately. The teacher is calling out names of students who failed the exam. Students are anxious, hoping for a quick resolution. Those who fail are captured by the guards. They cry, resist the guards, and even attempt to escape. The guard would physically punish students who resisted. Fortunately, Lina, Kellen, and Blake pass. Blake's girlfriend, Ellie, is called by the teacher and taken away by guards. He immediately contacts his father and requests assistance for Ellie. His father disagrees, claiming that the law applies equally to everyone. Frustrated, he rushes to save her. He attacks the guards and attempts to convince Ellie to flee, but is unsuccessful. Nobody would be able to escape. Blake tries, but cannot help Ellie. A year later and 24 hours before the thinning test begins, Corinne, Lena's younger sister, is taking her first thinning test. The doorbell rang. Miss Birch, Lena's teacher, has cared for her and Corinne as if they were her own children after their mother died. She reassures Lena that Corinne's first test is tomorrow and that everything will be fine. Meanwhile, Blake is filming a video in his room. He plans to write all incorrect answers on the test to teach his father a lesson. Cut to the day of the test. Lena drops Corinne off at kindergarten. Corinne's class views a video animation depicting the Earth's current state and the need for all nations to reduce their populations by 5% annually. Some countries restrict couples from having more than one child. Others executed the older generation. In America, the government chose to keep only the smartest individuals and execute the rest. These kids are no exception. The children's test then begins. The teacher is saddened because some of the children will be executed. Fortunately, Corinne passes the test. Lena and Kellen attend school for their test. The test begins and ends quickly. Governor Dean finds Blake's recording and becomes agitated. He instructs the test manager, Mason King, to pass Blake regardless of his score. Mason switches scores with Lena, causing her to fail. The test results are in, and to everyone's surprise, Lena's name was also called. She failed the test. Miss Birch challenges the guards, claiming that she is her best student and that the system is flawed. The results are final and cannot be changed. She hands Lena a key card, allowing her to unlock the doors and escape. Blake is surprised not to have failed. Successful students attend a school party to celebrate their accomplishments. Dean is delivering a speech as the governor to declare his candidature for the presidency of the United States. He boasts about their educational system. Their education system ranks first among 196 countries, and crime rates have decreased by 26%. Blake sneaks out of the party after hearing his father's speech. He sneaks into the hallway and beats a guard. He then enters the control room. Meanwhile, Lena and the failed students are taken into a room and placed against a wall. They are required to remove all their clothing for decontamination. Lena and the others are taken to a room where they will be executed via lethal injection. Blake suddenly turns off the electricity. 
leaving the entire school in darkness. Students about to be executed take advantage of the opportunity to escape, but none of them succeed, with the exception of Lena. The student exits the classroom using the keycard provided by her teacher. Mason soon enters the room and requests a headcount. When they discover Lena is missing, they begin their search for her. Blake finds Lana and assists her in fighting one of the guards. During their conversation, they become aware that Blake and Lena's results have been altered. They hide in a vent and follow network cables to the server room, where they can view results on a computer. The school is still under complete lockdown due to a power outage. The news spreads widely across the state. The parents outside are becoming concerned. Governor Dean calls Mason to inquire about the situation. Blake falls into the swimming pool after one of the vents below him breaks. Lena jumps after him. She pulls him out of the water, but he is not breathing. Lena performs CPR and successfully saves him. Blake and Lena change into clothes they found in the pool lockers. They proceed through the vents to reach the server room, but a guard stands in front of the door. Furthermore, Lena's key card falls into the vent in front of the guard. He doesn't notice the card, but she needs to retrieve it somehow. Her plan is to use a magnet and a string to fish the key through the vent. They proceed to the science lab to retrieve the necessary equipment. The guard approached the lab after hearing a slight noise. Lena escapes to the vents while Blake remains hidden in the lab. Lena moves through it to retrieve the keys. She makes it halfway up before being stopped by a guard. Blake disguises himself as the guard. He had beaten the guard and dressed himself. The guard they previously attacked informs Mason about their actions. He reveals that Lena carried a key card with her. Mason gathers all the teachers, suspecting that it was given to their students. Miss Birch flirts with another teacher and steals his key card while in the classroom. Mason continues to check teachers' key cards and IDs. Birch saves herself by revealing the card. Mason threatens the other teacher to reveal Lena's location since he does not have his. Despite being beaten by Mason, he maintains his innocence. Lena finally reaches the server room. Mason's computer is password protected, but she uses the keycard to access it. She texts Kellen, a skilled hacker, to gain access. After a while, Kellen receives Lena's text. He helps her navigate Mason's computer. Lena searches for her results and discovers she failed despite receiving 98% while Blake passed with 15%. After conducting additional research, she discovers that Ellie, who received an 88% also failed, while others with lower grades passed. Lena suspects a rigged grading system and the governor's tendency to fail certain students. Lena sends a file containing rigged grades to Kellen. Mason realizes she is in the server room after the power is restored. Lena realizes this and rushes out notices her right away. Blake, on the other hand, remains in disguise. He is among the students who failed. He instructs the guard to transport them to the recreational hall alongside the other students. The guard refuses, leading to a fight. The guards restrain him and discover his identity. Kellen receives Lena's message and is surprised by the rigged results. Kellen, who is friends with a news anchor, quickly sends an email to the channel. The news reports included receipts from the altercation in their results. After the photos were leaked, the governor received a call from his party head, who threatened to withdraw his presidential candidacy. He came up with a plan. To prove his innocency, he ordered Masson to stop the thinning process and revise the result. It means he ordered to execute all the fails, including his son, Blake. At the school, Mason and the guards take Lena to the thinning room where she and the others are executed. Blake is also present. Masson announces the name of the students who passed and released them. Lena kisses Blake, but the guards capture him and the others who failed. The execution method involves injecting a drug. After the lockdown, Lena is reunited with her younger sister Corinne and Miss Birch. After a few hours, the executed students' bodies are transported underground via lift. The students begin to move, indicating that the drug administered was a sleeping aid. They come to a halt when they arrive in a factory-like setting. It contains products produced by Asuru Global, a tech company. The factory employs a sizable workforce. Blake is surprised to realize one of them is his girlfriend, Ellie. The students who are supposed to be executed are instead brought underground to work as slaves for a multi-million company. The government planned this as a strategy for free labor. 